welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. Today is episode number 666. Before I get started, I'd like to wish my daughter Mindy a happy birthday and also happy anniversary. She, her one-year anniversary was uh, on the 13th, and her birthday is today. And Mindy was on last week's show, the one about pink ribbon girls, because Mindy's the one with uh, cancer, breast cancer. And I want to uh, let everybody know some good news. The um, PATH report came back after surgery that there are, was no lymph node involvement. So uh, we have uh, some high hopes that she's going to beat this and be perfectly cancer-free in the next, I don't know, half year or so. So anyway, help me wish Mindy well. And thank you to Pink Ribbon Girls for being supportive to her. If you want to make a donation to Pink Ribbon Girls, you can just go to pinkribbongirls.org, I believe, or I'm sure you can find them. Okay, before we get started, I want to remind you that in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. To be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. If you want to pre-program that phone number into your phone, it's 614-459-9769. Okay? Also, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kvitko. And if, please go to my office Facebook page and like us. That would be awesome. All past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And we're not streaming live on Facebook because I can't figure it out today. It's the weirdest thing. I go to my own Facebook page and there's not a spot that says post or go live or anything. I don't know what it is about Facebook. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If anybody knows how to do that, uh, give us a call and explain it. <laughs> maybe maybe they got hacked. <laughs> maybe. The Twitter last week got hacked. Oh, did it? I read that, yeah. So okay. maybe they got hacked too, unfortunately. I hope not. Okay, well, that's, I hope that didn't happen, but maybe that's an explanation. I'm not completely inept then, is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so today is another one of these shows where I'm uh, allowing my producer to turn the tables on me, Jim. And uh, that was him, and he's going to be asking me questions today. So I guess, I think we've covered everything, Jim. There you go. It's all yours. Ask me almost whatever you want. Oh, almost? <laughs> I was going to ask you who you thought won the town hall meeting between the two candidates. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I fell was asleep. It? I didn't watch either of them. Yeah, neither did I. <laughs> I was watching something. I think I was watching baseball. But we left off. We've been doing this show. This is the uh, third time. Yes. The third one of these in the last, uh, like, five weeks or so. And where we left off is a very interesting question, I think. If you had not become a dentist, what do you think you would have done instead? Well, this is an answer that uh, most people aren't going to, um, wouldn't be able to guess. I would probably have become a professional drummer. Oh, I was going to say ditch digger. <laughs> Darn. Uh, actually, I was a professional drummer when I was younger. And I did that for two and a half years, traveled around the country, had private tutors, did it when I was in ninth and 10th grade. Um, you and, probably had groupies. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I did get fan mail. Let's put it that way. That's good. And so, no, I probably would have gone back into drumming and who knows who I'd have been drumming for, but uh, uh, I'm glad I didn't because I love what I do. But there's another thing I might have done and that might have become a physician. I may have become a physician. Not really sure. I'm glad that I became a dentist instead. And here's the reason. I think... Uh, uh, as dentists, we get to see our people every six months, most of them. And more often than not, they're not coming because they're in any discomfort. They just come because it's time for their cleaning, their exam, and their periodic x-rays. So, uh, but I think it's not the same for a physician. I think we see, only see our physician, most of us, when we have a sore sore back or a sore arm or a sore throat. Something hurts. Yeah, and that's all we want or, to talk or about. Or once a year for a checkup for some people. Right. Well, people should go, and I do go every year. But it is once a year, not every six months. So you don't get to become as close to your physician on a yearly visit as you would with uh, every six months. And 
again, most people are not wanting to talk to the doctor about what's going on in their life. They just want to talk about their illness, right? Or their right. Illness. Doc, help me feel better. So I feel like I get exactly. I feel like I get to be friends with my patients uh, more than I would than if I were a physician. And I'll tell you what, being on the road as a drummer, it's a lot of fun, but it can be lonely as well. Uh, uh, my best example that I mentioned to people is there's nothing more humbling than being surrounded by more people wanting your autograph than you have time to write um, one minute and then three hours later you're sitting alone at a laundromat and somebody comes in and they don't know who you are nor do they care <laughs> not exactly asking for your autograph you know what I mean so it's very now humbling. you're gonna get patients asking for your autograph <laughs> only if it were on a check I'm thinking yeah <laughs> So anyway, yeah, a drummer or um, a physician, and that might be important, right? That might be important. Why? <laughs> because do we, tell. <laughs> because of Doctor Kavitko's question of the day. That's, that's right. Listen up. The, that that will probably be the question of the day, or have something to do with the Doctor Kavitko's question of the day. Right. Remember, it's not a flute player, not a clarinet player. It's a drummer. A drummer, <laughs> like my. Fa Do you have a favorite drummer, real quick? Do you have a favorite well, drummer? Growing, who's up, growing up, like I loved, Buddy Rich. I loved Buddy Rich growing okay. up. Yeah, I figured yeah. Buddy Rich. And for me, it's a rock and roll drummer named Neil Peart, the late yeah? Neil Peart. Okay, who was a rock band called Rush. I was a huge fan of them in uh, junior high and high school, and he's just one of the most technically proficient drummers. But I have a Buddy Rich CD, so I, I read Buddy Rich. Wow, you know, he only had one tom tom, one of the small toms, one small tom snare drum floor tom two cymbals and a hi-hat but what a drummer yeah he could do all this stuff with those drums i had one more drum and i couldn't do half the stuff he did <laughs> so i never went and bought you know the 32 set where you just you know all surrounded by drums and cymbals and stuff it like neil seemed... peart had yes like 80 drums it seemed like surrounding him <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, i think phil collins is an awesome drummer too yes yeah, I don't think he drums anymore. His son drums now, but Phil's, uh, oh, he's a great lead singer, too. Yeah, yeah, awesome. From Genesis. Yes. So, okay. Next question? Sure. Next question. Now, so if you hadn't become a dentist, you think you would have done instead be a physician or a professional drummer. Now, the next question is, what advice can you give to someone who wants to become a dentist? First advice, study hard. You have to do well in school. You're competing against other people who also want to be a dentist and you're competing against people who have 4.0 GPAs, sometimes 4.2 for some of the, the schools that allow you to go higher than a 4.0. Um, if you're below a 3.75, you're already suspect. That, that leaves me out. <laughs> I was about a three point in college. Okay. But also um, you have to bring something special to the table. So um, in my case, I believe it helped me getting in that I had been uh, traveling around the country playing the drums. In my s dental school class, we had a former NHL hockey player. We had a former uh, commercial airline pilot. People that are smart in the way you need to be, but also have life experiences. They brought a little something extra to the table. Exactly. Wow. So a unique you, experience, if yes, you will. Yes. If you can do that, then it kind of makes you stand out a little bit. And then the, also, the other thing would be, don't be afraid. Uh, you can do it, but you have to put your mind to it. Okay, don't like get so overwhelmed. I'm never going to do this, never going to do this. Just study, uh, keep studying. You know, I kind of had to secede from the human race for several years because that's all I did was study. My former brother-in-law made fun of me for all the, all the studying I did when we were together for Thanksgiving and Christmas and, you know, uh, didn't really see the big picture. I did, and I think it worked out pretty darn well. But uh, there will be people that will say, why are you doing that? Just go get a job. Well, if you want to be a dentist, that's what you have to do. And you have to study hard. Now, there's no, you, just studying doesn't cut it. You have to be able to pass those tests, those quizzes. So get help if you need it. Get a tutor if you need it. You know, take the Kaplan course before you take the DAT, which is the dental admissions test. I believe if you have a good head on your shoulders and you study hard enough that you can do it. And it's something you really, really want. You've right. thought about it. You really want it. You've got maybe when you were... I don't know, 10 years old, you thought, this is what I want to do. Again, you're 15. I haven't changed my mind. This is what right. I want to do. You're in college. This is what I want to do. Right. And so you're going to do it and you're not going to feel like it's work because it's, you're working towards it. You're not going to feel like someone pushed you into it. Oh yeah. Nobody can push you into that much work. It just will not happen. Yeah. It has to be in your brain that this is your decision. If it's your parents' decision, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we've got, is that the, the, uh, we've got time for another question. I think um, before the question of the day. Um, well, it's up to you. You're running the show today. Yeah. <laughs> we got time for one more question. We're going to do the question of the day after Dr. Kavitko answers 
The next question, or maybe the next two questions, because they kind of go together. Uh, the next question is, what is your least favorite procedure to perform as a dentist? Okay, and I don't think we're going to have time for two because I'm going to be long-winded. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, the, the simplest answer is I don't have one because I love what I do. But let me just, you know, um, delve in a little bit more. Honestly, I wish that dentistry had never invented dentures because if there was no replacement for teeth or people didn't perceive that there would be, they would have done everything they could have to save them. Now, I'm not talking about people that are in their 80s and 90s right now because they had no choice. Back when they were younger, there was a thing called pyorrhea, and a lot of the sailors that were in and, and um, you know, uh, veterans that were in World War II, um, they used to get what was called long in the tooth, where their gums would recede, and they, they would get loose and they would lose their teeth. They thought they were getting a disease like a cold or a flu, and they would almost proudly say, yep, came down with pyorrhea and lost my teeth, had to get dentures. I'm, I'm long in the teeth. Yeah. Yep. So, but what dentistry figured out was that's not, it's not a disease like a cold or a flu. It's a long-standing infl inflammatory response to having debris on your teeth, uh, tobacco stain, food, pieces of food, plaque, tartar, all of that. And it irritates the gums and then they recede. And when they recede, they take the bone with it. Now you have periodontal disease or periodontitis. And by the way, that is what pyorrhea used to be called. Uh, I'm sorry, pyorrhea is what we used to call periodontal disease. And so, but let's say now we understand this and we know that there's no reason anybody should ever lose a tooth. And so moving forward, if we could eliminate the fact that people would say, just pull it, that would be so, so I guess what I'm saying is my least favorite thing is pulling somebody's teeth when I could save them. Yeah, exactly. And people could do a better job of starting when they're young of going to the dentist on a regular basis and also brushing and flossing on a regular basis, not just flossing three days before you've got a dental appointment. And exactly. And we can and saying, hey, that's it, doc. But I that's, floss. That's better than nothing. And by the way, remember, people, <laughs> uh, if you come twice a year, which is awesome, there's 365 days in a year. Well, we get two days out of that 365 to help you. The other 363 are on you. You're on your own. We're not there looking over your shoulder, making sure you got every speck of, of food. And so it really does come down to an individual's uh, desire to keep their teeth. And if you have that desire to keep your teeth, like my one grandmother did, she was always brushing and flossing. Mm -hmm. My yep. other grandmother, she didn't care. I think she had dentures when she was about 45. Right. And so people... So both sides of the coin. And I thought... Growing up with a good friend, a, a dear family friend who was a dentist, a dear family friend of my parents, I was always going to the dentist. And he was telling me, don't chew so much gum with sugar in it. I was a little kid. When I got older, okay, give up the gum, start flossing more. Now I think I'm going to keep my teeth until oh, yeah, I'm dead. Definitely. And by the way, physicians tend to give out suckers to kids after a visit. We don't. <laughs> if we give out anything, it's going to be, uh, I give out little stickers, you know, your great patient. Kids wow. love stickers. You know, little toys. If we were to give out something um, that was candy, it would be sugarless. Like, like you Sugar-free candy. Yeah. yeah. But we don't give candy. We give stickers. Okay. Well, that sounds good. So and I think we're going to leave off there. And you know what's time for now. Dr. Kavitko's question of the right. day. Right. Okay. So before we do that, now remember... Uh, we're not going to do it this minute because you have to listen to this, but uh, remember you're going to have a chance to win free flowers, so now's the time from DeSantis. And if you want to pre-program the number, 614-459-9769. But before we do the contest, we need you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's question of the day. Okay, so today I've been answering questions posed by Jim, my producer. What did I say when he asked me what I would have done had I not become a dentist? Did I say A, a professional drummer, B, a physician, or C, all of the above? All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. 
The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. But don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Well, we reopened back on May 1st, and I'm happy to say that things are going very well. Our patients are receiving the same great care we've always provided, and we are placing a huge emphasis on infection control. In addition to face shields, like the one I've worn since 1985, and of course exam gloves, my entire team is wearing surgical gowns and caps, and we are limiting the number of patients we have in the office at a time. I'm also happy to report that there's not been a single incident of COVID-19 associated with our office. Call us at 614-262-9588. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko & Associates today, 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Susan on the line. Good morning, Susan. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. What is the answer? Oh, I'll see all of the above. See all of the above. Would you have thought I might have been a professional flute player or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, what do you do for a living? Anything's possible. Yeah, I I'm guess. a pharmacist. Pharmacist. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So you've probably seen my name on some prescriptions. <laughs> you know, I, I think I have. Yep. <laughs> So, hey, thank you for listening. Thank you for calling. Stay on the line, and we will make sure those flowers get to you uh, from DeSantis, okay? All right. Okay, you have a great day now. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. So, um, yeah, with uh, my producer running the show, I think what he's going to have to do is call her back, right? You'll call her back? Yeah, and I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, and while I'm answering, you'll talk to her. Exactly. Okay. Make the it next, easy. The next question <laughs> is, and I know you've got a good answer for this one, what is your favorite procedure to perform as a dentist? Okay. I thought you were going to say perform just in general, like drum solo. No, drum solo <laughs> or as a dentist. Okay, we'll do dentist. All right. So honestly, um, I love placing implants. And, you know, it's kind of a, a follow-up to what I said earlier is I wish people wouldn't say just pull it. So when I place an implant, it's like I'm making you hold again. I'm, I'm undoing the damage of when you had your tooth extracted. And by the way, in some cases, I'm the one extracting the tooth because it's now split. There's something wrong that we just can't save a tooth. But more often than not, when we're placing implants, it's because somebody had a tooth out years ago. They thought having it out was cheaper or whatever or easier or maybe less scary because they went and had themselves sedated by an oral surgeon. And uh, so they said, just pull it. Well, when I place the implant, I feel like I'm giving you back that body part. And I do think of them as body parts, by the way. Because you wouldn't tell me just to, you know, just pull that baby toe that's infected, got the infected toenail. Let's just pull that one off. I'm not really using it anyway. Uh, nobody would really say that, right? So, uh, but in addition to the um, placement of implants, I love doing the connective tissue grafting. And again, that's putting things back the way they were, the way they should have been, uh, by covering up the root surface with uh, gum tissue. Uh, I love the fact that we can orally sedate people and that we can do the IV sedation because that actually allows us to do so much for so many people who are so afraid, and we can get those folks healthy, just like those of you that aren't afraid. That increases their comfort level, yeah. I would suppose. Yeah, and their attitude towards life and to other people. And they can. And uh, the last one I'm going to mention would be the smile makeovers, which is also a tie-in to 
uh, giving people confidence, giving it back if they used to have it and now they've lost it. Uh, a very uh, simple example of that would be somebody who has had all their teeth out. When they come into the office and have to take their dentures out for us, they'll hold their hand up to their mouth because they don't really want to be seen without teeth right. if they have no teeth. And, um, and so the, the smile makeovers, and by the way, the sedation options allow us to do those makeovers because they're long appointments, uh, sometimes uh, eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, depending on the patient and how much work we have to do. So just to recap, because uh, I know you were talking to Sue, the winner, it's implant placement. These are your, some of your favorite procedures to perform as a dentist. Right. Implant placement, connective tissue grafting, oral sedation, IV sedation, and smile makeovers. And as a drummer, your favorite procedure would be a drum solo <laughs> yeah, in the middle of the concert. Probably. Then I don't have to pay attention to the music. I just beat, just beat on the drums. <laughs> exactly. By the way, it's good exercise. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm exhausted after afterwards yeah yeah most drummers i've seen after a concert they look exhausted yes that's why the drummers are usually skinny have you noticed that i have yeah there's never an overweight drummer who plays all the time no you don't see that <laughs> you don't see that in rock and roll right now the next question is off the topic of dentistry if you could change one thing or maybe on the topic of dentistry if you want to go that way but if you could change one thing about the world what would it be Wow, it's almost like the Miss America pageant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's something you'd ask um, in the Miss America pageant. If you could change one thing about the world, uh, Miss Ohio, uh, what would you change? But, uh, but I'm glad you asked, actually, because this is actually a simple one, and I've thought about it a lot. It would simply be, we would all be the same color. There would be no race. Wouldn't that be cool? That, yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. No race, no racism because we all, we're all the same. Yeah. You wouldn't, uh, you know, give someone a hard time or discriminate against them because of the color of their skin. Because the way they looked. Because you have the same color. I'll be the same color. Wow. And if we wait I long enough. I never thought of that. If we wait long enough, and this is something that my wife has said. She said, I just can't wait until, like, the races have mixed so much that everybody's just this nice cream color. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> you know what? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So it would just think of all the issues that would go away if we were just all the same color. That's that changing cool. one thing about yeah. the world, yeah. and that's what it would be. Mm -hmm. If you could change more than one thing, what if you could change several things? Okay, I'm glad. And you I know you thought about this. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's tough to limit it to one, but uh, okay. So uh, there would be no crime. Think how much money, time, and effort we spend on uh, making sure people don't steal our stuff. And chasing down the police, chasing down criminals, the criminal justice system, the courts and the attorneys wouldn't prosecuting need jails, them. Wouldn't need prisons, wouldn't need any of that. You wouldn't if even there need was a, no crime. Wouldn't even need a key to start your car. Think about that. You wouldn't need a lock on your door. You, wouldn't that be cool? Just, yeah. You know? If okay. nobody you didn't have to worry about anyone hurting you or stealing your stuff. Yeah. Right. There would be no disease or illness. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. If we could, I mean, think about Star Trek or um, uh, Star Wars. Well, no, Star Wars, they did have, uh, well, they did have disease. Did they have disease? Star Trek, nobody really got sick. They I just think had that little been, thing yeah. that, you know, they just touch you and you're healthy, right? Dr. So, McCoy would <laughs> yeah. come in and say, okay, you're healthy. So it'd be nice if we could either not have disease or illness, or we would have a way of just zapping you and you'd be healthy again. Um, there'd be no war. No. Oh, yes. I think a lot of people would like that. No wars. Which kind of goes along with no crime because we wouldn't be at war because nobody would have stolen your oil supplies or nobody would have shot down your plane. So there wouldn't be a need for Or war, nobody would have crossed over to the border in your country and attacked you. Right, right, right. So we wouldn't have war. There would be just plain no suffering. Wouldn't it be nice if there was no suffering? Whether it's uh, people who were hungry, there'd be no hunger because it's just suffering in general. Wouldn't that be nice if that could go away? That would be great. And if I, I will add one that has to do with dentistry. Um, and that would be that everybody would go to the dentist and take care of their teeth and that they would keep their teeth if they are savable. <laughs> I've kind of beaten this to a pulp, aren't I? And that would kind of get rid of uh, the, the companies that make dentures. Right, right. They'd be going out of business. That's right. Or they'd get into another type of business, making uh, like partials, for example. Well, we would, yeah, we would still need to replace some teeth. There would still be car accidents. People would still uh, have athletic right. injuries and things. So we would still need implants and we'd still need partial dentures. But the reality is we'd probably not need full dentures. It'd be nice if everyone took care of their teeth and went to the, see the dentist twice a year. Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and here's the other thing with that, get things fixed when we tell them that they have something that needs attention because we fix it when it's small, it's a little thing. When we fix it, 
fix it when it's big. It's a big thing. And I thought like, about, like a root canal, for example. Exactly. Why wait till you need a root canal? But I want to expand on that a little bit, and I'm looking at the clock. Do we need to go to a break? We need to go to a break, and then you can expand on that. Okay, I want my 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 minutes back. Like I'm thinking about the debates, right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, all right. So you're going to go take us to break. Uh, no, you can do oh, that. Oh, I'll do that. Okay, so you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 666, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a faithful cub, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kawiko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Uh, my producer, Jim, has turned the tables on me. This is our third time doing this. I'm actually kind of having fun. What do you think? Yeah, and, and you were expanding on the last question I asked a few minutes ago before the break. What if you could change more than one thing about the world? You could change several things. What would they be? And we were talking about the dental version of that, which is people taking care of their teeth. So the expanded part is this. I thought about this last night, and I just had a patient come in, and we talked about it before, but I've never used this example before. And here's what it is. Uh, people have dental insurance. Dental insurance has almost become a detriment to getting your teeth healthy because of how little they pay. And people don't know how little they pay. And so they think, oh, gee, it's, you know, it's October, so uh, I'm going to wait and get that other tooth done or these other three teeth done next year. Well, next year, you're only going to have enough insurance to do one of those three teeth, and then you're going to try to wait for another year, and you're going to only try to have time to, or money to do one. And you're trying to do in four years what should be done next week. So, Think about this. You would not go to your auto mechanic when you need brakes and say, I just want the left front brakes done. Just the left front. I can only afford the left front right now. Yeah, or four bald tires. I only want one tire. Because my, my insurance is only going to cover one. Yeah. And then next year, get the right front uh, brakes done or tire. And then, and then uh, in 2022, get the uh, right rear brakes, right? And then 2023, get the left rear brakes. That's ridiculous. No, most people wouldn't do that. No, because you're not going to be able to stop the car when you need to. And you're going to get in a car accident, wrap your car around a tree or something, or, or even worse, hit a pedestrian, right? Yep. So I just want people to think about that. We take better care of our cars than we do our bodies, okay? You can buy a new car next year or three years from now. If you have dental care that is pending, if you have an abscess that's developing, even if it doesn't hurt you or decay that is there, and it doesn't hurt, promise me, or I promise you, decay doesn't hurt. You don't know you have a cavity, but you're leaning, you're working towards getting a, um, an, an abscess and you don't even know it. So don't let your insurance company dictate, uh, trick you into yeah. trying to spread this out over three, four, five years. That's one or dictate to you. They'll tell you, they'll be the first to tell you they don't uh, diagnose, they don't treatment plan. All they do is pay what they're obligated to pay. So when they say we're not paying for it, that doesn't mean it's not necessary. It just means they're not paying for it. Sorry, but we're not paying for that. That's the way they see it. So anyway, that's the expanded part of that. And uh, everybody would do great if they uh, remembered this. Just remember, take better care of your body than you take care of your car or your home. Right? You just need to do that. Can't go out and buy a new body. Exactly. You need to take care of the one that you have. Okay, so that does look like that's pretty much all the time we have. Am I right, Jim? Yes. Okay. 
Thank you so much for doing this for me, Jim. I appreciate it. And we do have some more questions, so who knows? We might do it again. Okay, so folks, that's all the time we have. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Please remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 614- 262-9588 or send an email to speaking at the reasons we smile.com.